Welcome, sweet friend. It's Ashley Clark with Earthkeeper Yoga, and I'm here in my studio here in Birmingham, Alabama. For today's class, I thought we could focus on alignment. So I'm going to lead you through three postures as well as tell you about the importance of Shavasana. And that is gonna be our class for the day. So I don't think that you'll need any blocks, but I do have mine at the top of the mat. The blanket or beach towel could be super helpful since we're gonna, uh, one of those postures is table. So it might be nice to have some cushion for your knees. Anyway, grab that and meet me right back here. All right, sweet friend, as we begin, before we move into our first posture, let's go ahead and let our hands and feet get a little bit warmed up before we put any weight on them. So go ahead and just extend the legs long. If you're sitting on your blanket or beach towel, go ahead and let that tailbone come off the front of the blanket, and then just let the hands come and rest in the lap. Let those shoulders sink down. Think about the chin being parallel with the shoulders and go ahead and let yourself close your eyes or have that soft gaze here. Let's find a cleansing breath. So inhale deep, exhale, sigh it out. Beautiful. And just keep those eyes closed or that soft gaze. Let the breath begin to travel in through the nose and leave the body through the nose as well. Give yourself about four more breaths, just checking in with how you're doing mentally, physically, emotionally today. There is no wrong answer. Beautiful. Go ahead and flutter your eyes back open and we're going to take the hands and we're going to bring them where the fingertips are face down towards the floor. Take an inhale, send the arms and the gaze up and then exhale, let those palms come down in front of the heart. Keep the chin parallel with the shoulders. From here, what we're going to do is send the hands apart, maybe, I don't know, like a hand's length in between and then we're going to dip those fingers down, let the back of the palms come to touch maybe fingers interlace, and then start to press the palms towards one another and send the elbows down. Big stretch through the back of the wrist. Breathing into that stretch. We don't want to hurt ourselves, but it's good to do. And then we'll just slowly let those hands come to palms, spread the fingers nice and wide, and start to lift the elbows just a little bit. The bottom of the palms may come apart, but you're just pressing those fingers into one another and just start to let them peel apart, stretch through the fingers, and then we'll shake out the hands. Beautiful. Now let the inside of the feet touch and just go ahead and start to make some circles with the feet. Pops are okay, that's just gas escaping. It's just air in the joints. <clears throat> so you can just move those feet, circling, creating some synovial fluid moving through those joints, and then go back the other direction. If you sit a lot, you could bring the balls of your feet to the floor and do this little circle with the ankles as well. <sighs> okay, shake out the legs, shake out the hands. And let's move into our first position for the day. So table is great in yoga just because there are so many different things that you can do from it. So if you have bony knees or you like a little extra cushion, you can always take that blanket or beach towel and just bring it to where you can put your knees on top of it. All right, so we're gonna talk alignment. So we're gonna start with the fingers. So spread the fingers nice and wide. And then you're gonna think about really letting the wrist, which we stretched out, be right underneath the shoulder. And then the eye of your elbow, that's, so that's the inside of your elbow, that's gonna to shine towards the top of your mat. So that's your hand posture. And then for the low body, what you wanna do is make sure that the knees are right under the hips. So if you feel like the knees are back further, you wanna bring them up 
and you don't want them too close either because that creates a little rounding in the low back and we want a nice long spine. So once you get those knees right under the hips and the wrists right under the shoulders, for a table, what you'll do is you'll reach the crown of your head away. There's space in the back of the neck. And then you want the tailbone to not be rounding where the tailbone curves up. And you don't want the low back rounded either. That's actually part of cat-cow. So you want a nice flat back. And then you're pressing into the arms. So the arms are a little bit activated here. Um, eyes of the elbows shining towards the top of the mat. And the crown reaches away. So give yourself three or four breaths here. See how that feels. We'll keep the breath in and out through the nose. Last one. Beautiful. All right, let's move through some cat-cow just to warm up the body. So we can go ahead and cover this one today as well. So I'm gonna show you cow first, and that happens on an inhale. So when you do cow, you let the belly button start to drape down towards the floor. The low spine really curves and the booty shines up towards the ceiling. Same thing with the head. So the crown of the head reaches up. You're gonna feel a stretch through the stomach as well as through the chin and the throat. That is an inhale. And then to exhale, you're gonna go ahead and start to bring that tailbone round in, round the chin into your chest, and the shoulder blades come apart as you press the pelvis forward, really getting a nice big stretch through the low back and the shoulder blades. So let's start to move. Inhale, crown and tailbone up. Exhale, belly button starts to go up towards the sky. Spine rounds, pressing into knees and to hands, moving just like that. Breath stays in and out through the nose. And give it one more. Beautiful. See if you can sit the heels or sit the booty back towards the heels. And we're just going to sit up for just a minute. You're going to feel a stretch through the front of the legs, through the front of the quads. All right. So you've done cat cow and you've done table. I'm going to show you a resting pose just before we move into down dog. So if you need that during our practice, you have it available to you. So child's pose is gonna keep the booty back next to the feet. If you feel like you need more space, you can send the knees wide so that the belly really drops between the legs. If you have tight hips, sending the knees wide is also really good. And then you're gonna send the arms as far out in front of you as you can and let the upper body really melt down towards the mat. Forearms connect to the mat. If it's impossible for the brow to touch, you can actually bend elbows and stack palms and let the forehead come to the back of the top palm. So child's pose is great to open the hips. It's um, the most used resting posture in between different sequences in a class. And um, it's really nice, but if it's uncomfortable, then you could choose a different resting posture. You could come down onto your back. You could send the arms and the legs up towards the sky. Um, you have to choose what's best for you. When you're ready, take an inhale and press into your hands and walk yourself up. We're gonna to come to that table. Now, if you sent those knees wide, bring them back under the hips and then make sure that the eyes of the elbows are pointed towards the top of your mat. Long spine here. For down dog, you're gonna curl your toes. I'm gonna to come in and out of it several times to show you, but let me give you a um, preview. So you'll take an inhale with toes curled and then exhale, you hinge at the hips and the shoulders and let the head hang heavy. 
Now, right now, my heels are not on the floor because my legs aren't warm. So ways that you can warm up the back of the legs is to pedal through the feet, And since I can't see you, take an inhale and exhale, come down to knees. Now what I'm gonna show you next is I'm gonna show you different things that I see when I'm leading a yoga class in person. I'm gonna show you what I see and I'm gonna tell you what it feels like so that if that's what your down dog feels like, we can adjust it and correct it. Because if you don't like down dog, you will not like yoga. All right. So here we are in our table. First, I'm gonna show you a high booty plank. So you're gonna to curl toes and then lift hips, but even if I send my hips back, I'm really just in a booty up plank. So I'm holding all of that body weight in my arms and in my hands, in the palms, right on the wrists. So to correct it, what I'll do is send the hips back, hinge further at the shoulders, and then let those legs start to extend only if it feels okay. I think I could practice 10 hours in a day and I'm not sure really that my heels would ever really make it to the floor. So your feet aren't wider than your hips, so the widest part of your hips is where the feet placement would be. Take an inhale, exhale, slowly lower the knees and give yourself a brief child's pose just to rest the body. You can sit back up onto the booty on the heels and lift the upper body and I'll show you some other things that I see in down dog and we'll try to correct it together. So down dog, I also see this quite a bit. So right now all I'm doing is putting a lot of weight on my legs. The stance is too short. So my feet are on the floor, but there's not enough space from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. So I really need to step those feet back some, even if the heels don't want to touch the mat, you want more space. So this is not down dog. This is just a forward fold with your arms out in front. Okay, that can happen. And then other things that I see quite a bit are really nice legs that are fully extended to the floor, but then the elbows are bent. <clears throat> and so again, I'm holding a lot of weight in my shoulders and in my upper arms. So you would just hinge at the shoulders and the hips, really press the hands into the floor and find more of a hinge at the shoulders and the hips. And brief child's pose just to rest it out. All right, I'll show you another. So another one that I see is another version of that booty up plank. So right now I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna actually face towards you so you can see me. So right now I've got my hands forward, right? And my legs, <clears throat> the eyes of my elbows would also come forward, but I've bent my elbows just enough where I'm holding it in my shoulders again or I'll see a bend in the elbows and really straight legs. So again, I'm not holding this weight how I should and I'm putting a lot of pressure on my shoulders. In which case you would shine those elbows forward, eyes of the elbows forward and hinge at the hips. Head hangs heavy, gazes towards the knees if the eyes are open. We're gonna start to walk those feet up and let's meet at the top of our mats in a forward fold. Take an inhale and exhale. Give yourself a slow rise. We're gonna to come to stand up. Here's our mountain pose. So things that we wanna focus on in mountain, we want each foot completely connected to the floor. <clears throat> so we don't wanna feel like we're holding all the weight in the balls of the feet or in the heels of the feet where you lean back a little bit, really even out the weight. And then the arms are down by the side, palms shine forward. 
You don't want to have your knees locked. So you're going to inhale, ripple up awareness through the body, reach the crown of the head towards the sky. You can see there's space in the back of the neck. Chin is parallel with shoulders. Give yourself a breath in through the nose, side out through the mouth. Beautiful. Inhale, arms and gaze rise. Reach those fingertips up towards the sky and then bring those palms together in front of your heart. Give yourself a breath. <sighs> Beautiful. All right, let's move into what a um, warrior two would be. So we're gonna do the right side first. So you're gonna step your left foot forward, toes are pointed towards the top of the mat, and then the right leg is gonna open where the heel is in line with that left foot. So before we even worry about the arms, let's bring the hands together in front of the heart, just like we did in that mountain pose. And let's talk through some of the things that happen with the leg. I'm actually gonna point myself towards you so you can see here. All right. So the knee on the front leg is bent. The knee is over the heel. The knee is also pointed towards the toes. So this is not good. We are out of alignment and we're also putting extra pressure on the knee. So bring that knee in line, okay? That's the front leg. And you can help that by squeezing the inside of the bent knee, of the bent leg. The back foot, now there, the heels are in line with one another. Right toes are pointing towards the outside edge, right outside edge of my mat. And my hips are open, okay? So <clears throat> shoulders are over hips. If I wanna move into full expression of warrior two, I bring my arms into a T. Lots of burning going on in that front leg. So what I see, hold on, let me get that out. What I see a lot in Warrior Two is this back hip is actually pointed towards the top of the mat or the upper right corner of the mat. That's putting extra pressure on the knee. What we wanna do is open the hips. So you can get that movement from that right shoulder. Open and shoulders stay over hips. I also see like surfing, right? Like people are gonna surf. So they're leaning forward with the upper body. We wanna pull it back, line it up. A little trick is to bend the elbow on that back arm and bring it to the small of your back. Is that shoulder in line with the hip? Warrior two. Beautiful. Go ahead and straighten that left leg. Bring the toes to the long edge of the mat. We'll just move to the other side. So bending into the right knee. Now we're facing the left side. So if you need to turn around, totally fine. Knee is over ankle, heels are in line, left toes pointed towards the left side of my mat, hands are at the heart. So right now I am out of alignment because my upper body is twisted towards that right knee. What I need to do is send my upper body back in line with shoulders and hips. Shoulders, hips, arms in a T, Gaze goes over the middle finger of that right hand, pressing into the outer edge of the left foot, hips open. I'm breathing in and out. Beautiful. Stretch through that right leg, come to the long edge of your mat and bring your hands back into the center at heart. This is called wide leg mountain with prayer hands, okay? Take an inhale through the nose, side out through the mouth. <sighs> Beautiful. All right, we're gonna practice a wide leg forward fold. So inhale, send the arms and the gaze up. Bend the knees, you're gonna forward fold and come down to the hands to the floor. Now, if your hands don't make it to the floor, you could put your hands on blocks. You could also clasp elbows. So what I want you to see here is, is that my knees are not locked, probably not the best pants, but 
You don't want to lock the knees. That's really bad for the low back. It's bad for the knees. So there's a little bit of softness there and the head hangs heavy towards the floor. And we do so many forward folds in yoga that that's why it's advised that you don't eat or drink um, before class. Like let yourself come on an empty stomach. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, forward fold, let it all go. Beautiful. Start to shimmy those feet towards one another and then face your head towards the top of your mat. Hands come into contact with the mat. Step the feet back. Here's your down dog. Breathe. Outside edges of the feet no wider than the outside edges of your hips. Head hangs heavy. Inhale. Exhale, bend those knees, slow lower of the knees all the way down to the mat. Tops of the feet to the mat. Sit it back, child's pose. Last breath. Take an inhale, move into your table. Check those eyes towards the top of the mat. Link through the spine. Crown reaches away, curl toes, inhale. Down dog. Walk those feet up to meet hands, top of the mat, forward fold. Take an inhale and exhale, slow rise, coming into that mountain. Let's practice again. Whole feet connected to the mat, crown reaches towards the sky, palms shine forward, cleansing breath. Inhale, arms and gaze rise. Exhale, hands come down in front of the heart. Take a fresh breath. Move body weight over to that left foot and let's step this right foot back. Keep those hands in front of the heart. You're open to the right side of your mat. Bend that left knee right over the left heel and then bring the arms into a T, warrior two. Gaze over the middle finger of the left hand, making sure that the knee is over the heel, shoulders are over hips, and the hips are open to the right side. Think of warrior two as a hip opener. Straighten through the left leg, spin on the left heel. Let's go straight into warrior two on that right leg. So look around, what can you see? If you had a mirror handy or a window with your reflection in it, that might be nice. Or after we're done, you could turn the camera on your computer or phone or iPad, whatever you're using, and just look at your alignment. You can also use your shadow like I have. Last breath. All right, straighten it up. Take an inhale, arms and gaze rise. Exhale, forward fold, wide leg forward fold, knees not locked, hold it two breaths. Beautiful. Lift the upper body, start to shimmy those feet closer together, and then face the top of your mat in a forward fold from the middle of your mat. Walk your hands forward, feet back, down dog. Hinging at hips and shoulders, not worrying about whether or not heels are touching the floor, and the knees are a little soft. Strong, pressing those palms into the floor. And take an inhale, start to come into a plank-like shape. Bend those knees, let them come down to the mat, tops of the feet to the mat. Child's pose, rest it out. And send those knees wide if you need that.
All right, take an inhale, come through table. And then you're gonna take your feet and swing them over to one side so that you can come down onto your booty on the mat. Send the legs out long. I'm gonna tell you about Shavasana before we do it. And we'll do a very short one, maybe only like 60 seconds. In a regular yoga class, it would be a little bit longer and it would definitely depend on how long of a class it was. Um, but Shavasana is when everything that we just did is integrated into your body. We move energy through the body. We release things when we open the hips, when we lift the arms up over the head and we create some space in the side body. We're just releasing things. So having Shavasana is so challenging for some people because the idea of slowing down and finding stillness is too much for the mind. But we have our breath, so we're gonna use it here. So go ahead and come down onto your back. If it's too much to keep the legs extended long, if that's too much pressure on the low back, you can always bend the knees, but let the feet just kind of fall out to either side. The palms shine up towards the sky, just like a mountain pose. So you're basically in a mountain pose, but on your back. Check the position of your chin to your chest. And close your eyes. Give yourself a cleansing breath in through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> Beautiful. Now slowly just let that breath move in and out of your body through your nose. And keep your awareness on your breath moving through your body. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, bringing some awareness back into this space. Circle the wrists, bring some movement to the ankles. Reach your arms up over your head, give yourself a full body stretch, reach the fingertips, point the toes. And then slowly let yourself roll over onto your right side. Bend those knees up towards the belly. You're laying completely on your right side. Give yourself three breaths right here. Beautiful. Take that top hand, press it into the floor and you'll come right back up to your comfortable seat. We'll meet together with our hands in front of our heart, chin bowed down towards chest. I hope, this ho I hope that this short practice has given you a starting point. And may you stay with that beginner's mind, allowing yourself the compassion to meet yourself right where you are. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or reach out to me at earthkeeperyoga.com. And for today, may you know kindness and may you be kind. Gratitude for practicing with me. Namaste.